Okay, hello and welcome to the first of uh, a series of six small sessions, small lessons, uh, where we're actually going to look at uh, energy at uh, key stage three. Okay, so as I said, this is the first of uh, six lessons. In this first lesson, we're going to have a look at the basics of uh, basic energy types. Um, throughout these different sessions, um, the next lesson will be on energy transfer diagrams. Uh, lesson three will be on uh, heat and temperature. Um, lesson four will be on thermal energy transfer. Lesson five will be on non-renewable and renewable energy resources. And lesson six, the final lesson, will be on saving energy. Um, so let's start with lesson one, uh, the basic energy types. So we have kinetic, or we have what is called kinetic and potential energy. Now there are several different types of energy, and this is where we're going to start. Okay. Now potential energy is where we're going to start. Now every stationary object, um, which is above ground level, is said to have a potential energy. Um, now it doesn't necessarily even have to be above ground level. Um, in this case, what we're looking at here is a stone, which is on the edge of a small cliff. Now this is going to be explained exactly the same as what I have in my hand, just a small ball. Now the fact that it's stationary on my hand, and the fact that it's above ground level, but my hand is, is stopping it from, from, from falling, from the force that we know of which we call gravity. So this basically means that this ball, because it's above the ground, it has, potential, it has gravitational potential energy. So it has the potential to have and expel energy from here to the floor. Now that movement is where potential energy becomes kinetic energy. Now, as I said, potential energy is something that is in something that an object that is stationary. Because kinetic energy implores movement. So if I now take here, take our gravi gravitational potential energy that we have in this ball, which is stationary, I then release it, and that potential energy is then transferred into kinetic energy which then is what pulls it down to the ground, which is obviously the, our, our gravity, but by releasing it, it's tra transferred that potential energy into kinetic energy. So as we see from our diagram here, at the bottom here, we have, um, we have just potential energy. As it's forced upwards, its potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. So at its maximum, when it's traveling the fastest, is its maximum kinetic energy. As it reaches the top here, it runs out of kinetic energy, and the balance between the kinetic energy and gravity means that it would, in a moment, very split second moment in time, it would stop. This would mean that the maximum potential energy has been achieved with the minimum kinetic energy. This is not moving anywhere, but it has still above the ground, so that's why it still has the potential to do something. As it falls back down again, we again have maximum kinetic energy with minimum potential energy until once again we are back stationary. So we have kinetic, potential, kinetic. So again, just one more time, we have gravitational potential energy. As we move it, it converts into kinetic energy, which is movement. So potential is stationary, kinetic is movement. So we move on, we move on to thermal energy. Now thermal energy is to do, it's all to do, as the name suggests, thermal is to do with heat. So here we've got uh, a sink, you can obviously do it on a slightly bigger scale with a bath. Um, so thermal energy is, the, the basic idea of thermal energy is the vibration of molecules in a substance. Uh, the faster that, they, the faster that they, they move, the faster they vibrate, generally the hotter they are, which means they have greater thermal energy. Um, it's directly linked to heat, so in this case with, bath, with a bath, if you had very, very hot water, it would have a high thermal energy um, level. Whereas if you added cold water to it, the cold water would have very low thermal energy. So the molecules in it would be moving slower. So if you actually added the cold water to the hot water, this would generally mean that overall, the molecules would be slower moving than they were when it was just hot water, but still faster moving than when it was cold water. So the thermal energy would have been reduced, so therefore the temperature would have been reduced as well. So that's thermal energy. Sound energy. Now, sound energy is very different. Uh, this actually has 
although it does actually use um, the particles and molecules in the air to move, sound itself is actually a wave. It moves very exactly as you would think with a wave, not a wave like that, but it has very wave-like motions with how it actually moves. What it actually does, it interacts with the molecules in the air, which themselves help to carry the sound energy and carry the sound waves along it until you actually receive it in your ear and in your eardrum. So as I say, sound energy is actually sound waves. So chemical energy. Now, chemical energy can also, at the beginning of the stages, be known as chemical potential energy. So here we have, we have a candle. Now this itself, the wax in the candle and the wick itself, this can be described as having chemical potential energy. It basically, basically means the same as what I'm actually going to use to light it is a match itself as well has chemical potential energy. Now as we discussed before, potential energy is something that is stationary, it has no motion. In order for it to become something else, you must add or transfer it to something else. So this chemical potential energy can be transferred into thermal energy by using kinetic energy. So if I have my match and I strike it on the matchbox, with the movement I'm giving it kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy, with to do with friction as well, would transfer our chemical, potential chemical energy into thermal energy. So the friction and, and kinetic energy transfers our chemical potential energy into thermal energy. Now this again itself is exactly the same how a candle would work. So a candle has chemical potential energy by adding a small amount of energy, i.e. this time in terms of thermal energy, I then not only actually still keep some thermal energy, I'm actually producing more thermal energy because I'm actually transferring the chemical potential energy in the candle into not only light energy but also thermal energy as well. So this is the basic terms of how chemical energy stands and also how chemical energy can be transferred into other forms of energy. So also we have electrical energy. Now electrical energy can be itself formed in various different ways. See often Morpheus there. So actually the basic ways in which you would see electrical energy would obviously be in your standard battery. Now, you know, I'm sure everyone's seen the battery. This is a 9 volt normal battery and it itself within the battery holds, has chemicals which are mixed together which itself then produce electricity. So it actually takes chemical potential energy and once placed in a simple circuit like this can be used to create electrical energy. Now later on in a few more of these lessons, especially when we go into non-renewable uh, energy sources, you will have a, look, a better look at exactly how electricity is produced uh, and exactly you know, the different ways of which it is used and the different types. As I said, we will go on to renewable. This is actually a different type or a type of renewable energy source uh, in terms of wind turbines. And this is actually taking the kinetic energy of wind and uh, transferring it into via a generator to create electrical energy. Again, we will have another look at that, that's around lesson five. So, an overview of our basic energy types. Uh, there are only the main types of energy that can all be created in several different ways. Uh, again, we will cover this in along the different lectures. Although these are the main types of uh, energy that we looked at today, as I said, there are various ways of making them. There are also a few others, but we will have a look at those um, in the key stage four lessons. Um, so how does the energy system work? Um, in the next lesson we'll be looking at uh, energy flow diagrams. Um, that will actually give a great idea of exactly where our energy comes from, how it's transferred, uh, and ultimately how it's received and used. Um, and how, yeah, as I said, so how is energy transferred from one place to another? And how do we show how the energy is used? So we will look at useful energy and non-useful energy. So that is the end of uh, lesson one. Uh, so lesson two is on flow diagrams. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Ian McDowell and I'm a student at Boston University.